All right, gonna play some PvP for the first time. Might as well throw down a farm so I get some money. Okay, gonna take a little bit of damage here. That's not too bad. I better put down a knight so that I can counter these zombies. Wait, what is this? Offense? Oh, dude, we can spam enemies at these guys. Just spam enemies, y'all. They're just spamming at us. <laughs> oh, just spam some enemies, guys. This is gonna be too good. No, wait. They're spamming at us! They're spamming too much! They're not even placing towers! They're using all their money to spam! Come on, guys! Oh my god, no! Man, come on! Okay, new rule, people. No spamming. Just play the game like you're supposed to. We're gonna have an actual real PvP here. They're spamming again! They're cheating! They're sending too many enemies! This is not how you're supposed to play the game! Bruh, I'm never playing PvP again. You know what? If you can't beat them, join them. I'm not gonna place a single tower. I'm not even gonna try and play the game. I'm just gonna spam zombies on them. <laughs> yeah, who's getting spammed on now, boy? There's no way they're gonna survive this. Ha ha ha! They sent so many, but it's too late. I'm faster. I was spamming first. Yeah, look at that health melt. Yeah, you guys are dead. There's no way you're going to survive this. Wait, what? No! 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 And that's why I don't play PvP. Welcome back, guys. Or if you're new to the channel, just welcome. My name is Harrison, and I have two cats. Today, I'm going to be talking about Evolution Evade, one of the mini tower defense games on Roblox. This is actually a game I played right when I started playing TDS back in March of 2020, so I wasn't too familiar with the whole tower defense concept. But now that I know more about the genre, I'm interested to come back and play it and let you guys know what I think about it. But before I get started, go ahead and smack that like button with the back of your head. Come on, I bet you can't do it. The first thing I noticed about this game is that it's been massively reworked since the last time I played it. So if you haven't checked it out in a while, I suggest you go see what's new. Just according to its game page, it has a whole list of changes. The devs reworked the towers with new models and animations. There's a new placement system. All of the enemies have been remodeled and reanimated. There's new enemies and new bosses. An almanac and a potion system has been added, both of which I'll go over in more detail in this video. The UIs have been revamped. There's been balance changes. The devs added more maps. Enemy lag has been fixed, as well as bad and loading into games. PvP rewards have apparently been increased, although I wouldn't know because I always lose. So let me go ahead and jump in by announcing that according to the EE Discord, the winter update will officially release on Friday, January 15th at about 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. Here is an exclusive picture of the winter map that you're not going to see anywhere else. Obviously, we can see that it's an ice-themed map with ice enemies. And I'm not sure how long this event is going to run for or if you'll get anything for beating it, but we're all going to find out together when it releases on Friday. And now you might be thinking, Harrison, what the heck is Evolution of Aid? I've never even heard of it. So allow me to go over some basics. The general idea here is that there are different eras in the game that come with different enemies that get more difficult as you progress. And to counter these harder enemies, each era comes with its own towers that are stronger than the ones from the previous era. The five eras are Stone Age, Medieval Age, Renaissance Age, Modern Age, and Future Age. With an All Age difficulty at the end, that's uh, <laughs> pretty difficult. Trust me, I tried to beat it yesterday and died. Within the different eras, there are three difficulties you can choose from, either normal, hard, or impossible. To unlock the next era, you have to beat any map in your current era on impossible. So let's say you're in the first era, which is the Stone Age, and you want to open up the next era, which is the Medieval Age. Pick any map and beat it on impossible, and now you'll have the ability to purchase stronger towers to fight against the stronger enemies from the Medieval Age. Of course, you can always take those stronger towers back down to the lower era, and it'll be easier to beat. And so that's how you're going to choose your difficulty in this game. Now I'm going to tell you how to actually get into a game. This system is so simple to play with your friends. You actually create a lobby and then decide how people join it. It can either be open, friends only, or password required. This really takes the headache out of starting a match because you can always choose who you want to play with. And can we just take a second to appreciate this lobby? This is really cool looking. Like a lot of time went into making this. I wonder what's down here. Okay, it's a room. I don't know, does this room do something? What's the code? Anyway, if you want to join a game without starting your own lobby, you can just choose from the games other people have created here. Now let's look at the tower selection screen. You start with only four tower slots. You get another spot when you get to 10 wins, and then you get another one at 25 wins. I only have four spots because I only have five wins because I noob. <gasps> you get one free tower per age, and then you have to use coins to purchase the other ones. Something I don't like about this screen is that you don't get to see the stats for each tower as far as damage, range, and fire rate and all that. I like to see specifically what each tower can do before I take it into a game. That way I can decide if one's better than another. You can also choose what skin you want to use here, and there's a perk system coming 
coming soon. And you can browse through to see what each tower looks like at each level. I really wish this came with stats. That would be super helpful. When you find a tower that you like, just come over here and press equip. And if you want to take it out of your lineup, you can just click on it and poof, it goes away. Now let's take a look at the reward system. Unlike some Roblox games, the daily rewards aren't automatic. You have to come in here and claim them. You also get rewards for completing tasks and for beating maps on different difficulties. I like this a lot because it adds some incentive to actually play every map on every difficulty. And the quests are cool because you actually get a powerful god tower for completing a series of them. And what's interesting is that their challenges like beat a certain map on a certain difficulty using only certain towers, which keeps the game fresh in my opinion. And here's the new almanac. This covers every single enemy in the game, giving you a brief overview of their speed and their health. And finally, I'm going to cover the potion system. This is really cool because it's something I've never seen in another tower defense game. You can choose from the fire potion, the power potion, or the immunity potion. These costs are 4,000, 5,000, and 6,000 coins respectively. These are additional buffs you can bring into your game that can help you overcome difficult enemies. The fire potion burns the ground and sets enemies that walk across it on fire, slowing them down by 60%. It lasts for 13 seconds and is usable after wave 10. The power potion boosts the attack on all of your towers by 75%, making them attack faster for 12 seconds and is usable after wave 5. The immunity potion heals all your towers and grants immunity against all negative effects like stuns for 20 seconds. And that does it for the menu, guys. Now I'm going to show you some gameplay and do what I've been waiting to do this whole time, buy these game passes. This is exactly what I was just talking about TDS needing. A face ID. Now I can choose what face I want my towers to have. Oh, you already know what it's going to be. Nico DJ face. And the avatar scaling. This is interesting. I haven't seen this before. Let's give it a try. Okay, so I've got a pretty good tower lineup here. I'm bringing one tower with a face. So I'm going to enter the face ID here for the Nico DJ face, and we're going to see what happens. Oh, wee, boy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, look at that. It's on the tower. So we're going to be rocking that face on the tower. I'm bringing some towers that you guys should recognize from Tower Defense Simulator. This is the Sentry. Um, this is essentially the Sentry, in this, or the turret, rather. It's called the Turret Guard in this game, and I have a farm. I have a Terminator, which to me is basically the Outlaw, or, <clears throat> sorry, the Ranger, and then the Gamma Ray, which is um, essentially the this game's version of the Accelerator. So we're going to run this loadout. I'm going to show you guys some gameplay with it, and I will talk a little bit about that. And we're going to check out these game passes. So let's go ahead and jump in. This is the pre-game lobby. This is where you're going to pick the map that you want to play. One of the cool features of this game is that you get three maps to choose from. And if nobody wants to play on those three, you can choose the veto them, and a different three maps will pop up for you guys to choose from. Autumn Falling looks a little different. I'm going to be a pro player here and put down farms instead of placing any kind of towers. Oh, cool. This guy has the Hades Tower. This is one of the gods you have to do the quest for. And then we have the Infantry Tower. Okay, I guess that's going to be like the soldier. One of the interesting things about farm in this game is that you don't have to wait till the end of the round to get money. I believe it actually pays you every 10 seconds. It gives you a certain amount of money. So you, there you can see the numbers popping up. It's giving me 110 right now. Man, that Hades is going ham. Oh no, fast towers. That's what I get for farming bro oh wow saved by hades that's why you're a god i can no longer claim god that is a god right there all right i'm gonna put down the turret here oh cool this guy has the engineer that looks kind of familiar right guys hmm i wonder what it does okay i saved up some money so i'm gonna actually throw down this gamma ray over here it's got a really big range i'm gonna put down another turret and this is a tesla coil right here i didn't have enough spots to bring one of my own but i really like the way these look and the way they work they're cool they have hidden detection so they're very important. Another thing that's cool about this game is when you hover over a tower, it tells you what the skin is. Okay, this guy is OP because he also has Poseidon. So Poseidon and Hades are two of the gods in this game. So you don't get money to place or upgrade towers in Evolution Evade until the end of the wave. Farm gives you money while you're fighting, and I believe Pirate gives you money while you're fighting, even though I haven't really used it. So here's a max level Tesla coil. Isn't that sick looking? So I went ahead and placed a Terminator here. High damage cliff tower that has a lot of range. Gonna go ahead and upgrade to level 4 so it's not useless, just like the ranger. Oh, this is one ugly dude. I got my Swedish windmills giving me 2k cash every 10 seconds. I've just maxed a Terminator. He does 430 damage with a fire rate of 21 and a range of 45. I'm not really sure how they calculate the fire rate here. He does seem to shoot pretty quickly. Whoa, max level factory farms. What?
What? Why is everything on fire? What the heck? That's gotta be Hades. Oh, it's called the Gamma Charger, not the Gamma Ray. My bad. So I've maxed my Gamma Charger. It looks like it does a range of damage between 8 and 60 with a charge time of 15 seconds and a recharge time of 4 seconds. This also has an insane range of 35. One difference between this tower and the Accelerator is that it does not transfer its attack from one enemy to the next. So if the bad guy that it's shooting dies, it just stops shooting. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you a century with a face. This is max level engineer right here. Doom skin laser blade. I got a hand into this game. They have a ton of skins. Here is the max level turret. Oh yes, look at his smiling face. I put down another turret so you can see its face clearly. Look at that. He's so happy to be killing things. You know what? I'm just going to spam gamma chargers. I think our base is safe now. I'm going to try out this character scaling. So it's on one. What happens when I change it to two? Oh god. Oh, okay. I can go up to 1.5. I see. Oh my gosh, I'm a giant. Guys, look at me. I'm huge. All bow down before the giant Harry. <laughs> okay, big is funny, but how small? Oh, sweet. I'm fast as freak. I'm fast as man alive. Too fast. Oh, Speedy Gonzalez. Oh, Sanic. Faster than Sanic. Hey, watch where you're going. There's a person here. Move over, buddy. I want to shoot this gun. All right, we're on the last wave. I guess I should try and help. Here's the boss for this difficulty. He's pretty cool looking because he's got two heads. He probably just wants a friend, guys. Although, can you really say that if you have two heads? Tiny Harry for the win. All right, and that's the game, guys. As you can see, there's a ton of variety here in towers, maps, difficulties, challenges, everything you can think of. If you're looking to try a new tower defense game, definitely go check out Evolution Evade. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button with your forehead, hit that subscribe button with your big toe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my amazing upcoming content. And while you're at it, go ahead and join my growing Discord community you can do that at discord.gg slash just harrison things and i will see you guys next time take care be safe and never forget what i always say peace